God put us on this earth to struggle. If he wanted to drop us into perfection, he wouldn't have put us here. He put us here to struggle. Sometimes God puts you in a situation where in front of you, you have a mountain of problems. Where it's a mountain of debt, a mountain of disease, a mountain of doubt. Hey, hey, ho, ho, George Bush has got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, George Bush has got to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, George Bush has got to go. Hey, hey. We were marching and I, they, they, they pulled the barricades in front of us. And I tried to pass it because my son was ahead of me. So I passed from that one to the next. And they put another barricade. So I got I got in the other side of the barricade and the first one in the line. So I asked the police, yeah. why are you doing this? And then he said, move back, sweetheart. And he pushed me in my breast, my right breast. And I said, don't, don't push me, you're hurting me. So another police came and with both hands pushed me and both of my breath with such a force that I was turned around and almost fell on top of the crowd in there. Mr. Chairman, delegates, fellow citizens, I'm honored by your support and I accept your nomination for President of the United States. <laughs> to everything we know, there is a season, a time for sadness, a time for struggle, a time for rebuilding. And now we have reached a time for hope. This young century will be liberty century. Hey, good talking with you again. God bless. Thank you. Give me a line for here. Give me a line for here. Go in the water. Go. Everyone here is under arrest. The thing that. Uh, people are most afraid of is nonviolent, uh, nonviolent resistance, you know, so that, that's, a, that's something that they have to really try to stifle as much as they can. Going to these sort of links to, you know, block us off and then arrest us for, you know, walking on a sidewalk, that's pretty weak. Yeah, you. Take all that away. Take all that off your head. Put the camera away, put the camera in here. What's that? Yeah. 
Come on, bro. We gotta get these cuffs on you, right? Just trying to get you out of here. Thank you, sir. Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens has led stand a federal appeals court ruling that allows challengers inside polling places in Ohio today. As Jim Roop reports, even the tough scrutiny doesn't mean we'll be free of potential problems, delays, or controversy. The Florida punch card debacle four years ago put how we cast votes in the spotlight. Most find out for the first time there is no standard in voting mechanisms. Mechanisms from the infamous punch cards to electric voting are used across the country. In fact, there are five different methods used. So many ways to vote that the potential for problem is still there. The only difference now is more people are paying attention to the potential problem, so the potential to have a problem is increased. And this is news from CNN Radio. What's going on? Uh, then we have three machines, and she's saying we have a two-hour wait, and uh, everybody else got more and machines. There's, and, and there's only three machines here, and she wanted to know where is there any machines left. And I believe we have more than just Go one precincts combined together here, because we had Linden Library and the BSW. They all come up here, so that means how many people you have up here? But we're gonna be patient because Bush ain't gonna be president. How many um? Uh, boots do you guys usually have here when you vote here? Ten at Linden Library. I've been here since nine, uh, nine o'clock. What time is it now? What time is it now? It's 10.51 right now, 42 people surrounding me. Like I said, I'm patient. And I said, next four years when it's time to uh, vote, I can guarantee you Carrie will have the right amount of machines here. I'll wait all night. Don't make me no difference. But look at the other people that's going to be here. That's just getting here. Yes, you got the elderly and everyone. They're standing out in the rain, too. Right. Oh, there's no rain going to stop nothing here. Uh, they, they got to go. They got to go. So we're going to stand here and be patient. Yeah, they let you go home, man. It just sounds perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying if I got to stay all night. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. They just making them. They just making them. They making somebody else's job more. That's all they doing. Yeah, we're having trouble with some handicapped. We can't wait. Stand for three hours. See, they should let them go to the front. Let the handicap go to the front. What was going on here was complete, just massive chaos and fairly deliberate chaos because what had happened is that the person that was in charge of running um, the polling place, that would have been a precinct captain, I believe is uh, the appropriate title, um, he came in, unlocked the doors, and then left. Didn't leave any instructions for anybody, let alone the fact he's supposed to be like running the place, you know, organizing everything. So, you know, I mean, around like 6.45, you know, when everyone's showing up to go vote, like, there's nothing, no one who's working there knows where anything's supposed to be set up. You know, they don't know how to ma manage a line. And it was really crazy. There was old ladies here that would like sit for like hours on end. There was a family that was living right at this white house right here. They, they had an older person there along with two adults. And so that's three total people in that household that could have voted at a polling place that's right across the street, like literally, and they couldn't do it. They could not sit in these crazy lines that were just like some kind of like MC Escher painting. And I mean, with the case with a guy that is supposed to be running the place, just unlocks the doors and leaves. I mean, he knows what he's doing. Like, <laughs> you're not just accidentally walking away from like a one a job that only happens one day a year. I had to take my grandfather back home. He couldn't stand in line and wait. He's 90 years old. You were so, there at what, 8 o'clock, you said? I was here at 8 o'clock this morning. And how big was the line then? It was to the end, to the block, end of the block there. So I had to take him back home. He couldn't, he couldn't stand that long. To you know, vote. Um, the peak time the line probably stopped around, right around this alley part. But it's just chaos. It's just tremendous, tremendous amount of people. Hmm. It looked like a, a rally for something. You know what I mean? Everybody was just here. And everybody was trying to vote. And everybody was trying to put their word down. The line's still going down. Still walking, still going. Every location in the hood was packed. Four pole booths in here, man. They had four pole booths. This, and like when people start getting around this, this is when they start getting frustrated. They start to see like, 
right here to get here and then see that the line's still not stopping. The line's going back down here, back around the corner, up the ramp. And even after all of this, they're still turning people away for Not shit. having the right bill, not having the right, not having the current bill. They, they literally tried to get me because they said I, I wasn't at that place. But she said, um, well, I don't see your name. I go down the list. I said, well, my name is right here. She said, oh, oh, your name is Chiron. I thought your name was Chiron. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's just one of me. It's only one of me. My name is right. It says Sims. Go with my name. It says Sims. So it's just like they all, they had so many reasons, so many excuses for people not to be able to vote. I mean, they had so many. They were just coming up with stuff out the blue. I mean, they was just amazing how good they were to create these reasons to not make you vote. I moved three weeks ago and I called the Board of Elections to see where I could vote at. They told me that I could vote at Crestview Middle School. Well, I came to Crestview Middle School today and they told me that I could not vote here, that I had to go vote at Pontiac. So I went down to Pontiac and they also told me that I could not vote there. So I called the Board of Elections again. The Board of Elections tells me I have to go to Sawyer Tower. The Board of, is this the place the Board of Elections told you to go? Yes. This one right here. So you're back at the one, the Board of Elections. They double checked you yes. when they had you on the phone yes. to verify that. You go in there and will you tell us what they told you? They told me that I still was not allowed to vote. First, they went to where their registration card told them to go, and they waited three hours there. Then they were told there to come here and cast a provisional ballot because they moved two weeks ago. And then they went through the whole line here, and they got to the front where they were supposed to vote, and they were given the provisional ballot itself, but they weren't allowed to vote. They were told they had to go back to the end of the line. And so we made these phone calls and found out that, yes, they really are supposed to go to the front of the line, but there was not much we could do legally because I think this is possibly a new form of voter suppression. I've been hearing several complaints where people say I went through the entire line and then they told me that for one reason or another I had to go back and go through the line again. There isn't enough parking for all the voters that we've got right here. Two precincts across the street from one another. Some people are just walking away because they're saying they got to get home and, and intending to come back, but it's hard. Three or four hour wait's a long time for a working family. Because one of the things that we were finding out from a lot of areas is that um, a lot of people were denying them the right to vote because they said they didn't have their um, registration, uh, their registration ID. And one of the laws that um, it is in the Ohio Voting Bill of Rights, this is number five, it says they are allowed to vote without showing your identification. On the news they said I wouldn't be turned away if I didn't have, a, have an ID and after waiting in line for five hours they tried to turn me away because I didn't have an ID. What were you feeling when you were standing in line for so long? There has to be an easier way than this. So they, they tried to turn you away? Yeah, what so, happened? Um, well luckily enough I went with you know one of my friends um, and he had a camera on him, you know, then when the camera came out, they basically started acting right. Look, they don't have enough polls in there. You know, I don't know if it's just in the hood communities, but I'm voting in the hood today, and that shit sucks. I went in and voted, and but it's still, till, still till this day, I don't feel like my vote counted. I felt like I wasn't in 2004. I felt like I was in some time where, where we were looked upon as being black, and we were looked upon as being chat out. We were looked upon as being two-thirds man or something. There was this lady there that was pregnant. She was in labor. I mean, labor. Oh, I, I, I think it's getting down to about 10 minutes. <laughs> and I said, well, I think you better go on to the hospital. She said, no, I can wait. I can vote. And they were still there, and she's walking and holding and walking and holding. And I wouldn't tell the lady. I knocked the door. I said, this is a lady out here getting ready to have a baby. You know, can she come in and vote? And she said, honey, I can't help you. Six o'clock, the rain is pouring down, and people are still in line. They have three machines in this precinct total uh, for 1,100 registered voters. The wait times to vote have ranged anywhere from an hour to, right now we're up to two and a half hour waits for people to vote. Uh, we have a line right now, and, and people have had to stand in the rain outside because this facility, this library, cannot hold the number of people in line. So people have been out in the rain all day to vote. And right now, as we're just past six o'clock, we have at least 150 people in line waiting to vote uh, with only three machines and with each voter taking approximately their allotted five minutes 
They can only get 36 voters per hour through this through this precinct. So we have a huge backup of individuals who are all really wanting to cast their, their vote, but the waits are just excessive. They're waiting for everybody who's been in line to be able to vote and, and finish up, but if you were here earlier, you would have seen terrible crowds. And as you can see, if you look at the entrances, there's nothing to distinguish the two precincts. That's 3B, this is 35B. It was a long wait. And then when I got to the line, I had to go to the other side because I was in the wrong district. The lady tried to tell me I couldn't vote. I had to, she had to call downtown and everything because she said I went in her line before 7.30. So people come in and they come in every line and they wait two, three hours, they wait. And then they get to the front of the line, turns out they're in the wrong precinct and they get sent somewhere else. But why isn't there a sign to say? We can lock the doors. Can we call lock the doors? When you, I got 729. He hasn't gotten here. He did. Oh, okay. If you're here to vote, you need to get inside. Right now. I can lock the door. Please, sir, you must be inside the building before 730. Oh, okay. Did you already vote? Yes. Okay. Okay. You come in there, that's it. She's been harassing us and voters all, all day. day. I thought she, I thought she was coming uh, here. The presiding judge. No, because because everybody yeah. thought she was the presiding judge. Right, she runs around. She runs around. Oh. I mean, she was really. Oh surprised. my God. She's serious. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What happened? She was in there and they would be not to go back in. Uh, oh, you were in there. earlier? Right I've been in there right since 5 30. I'm saying it was a little bit of a diabetic. I need <laughs> to come here. Sure. So I came outside. Uh -huh. If I'd have known that, I never would have came outside. And now they told you to hang you back in line. I'm a diabetic. I have a arthritis. I don't stand in the line. I can't do anything for her now. Sorry, I can't do anything for time. I cannot do anything. I just want to make sure that you Nothing that I can do for time or not. No, I'm not going to put it back on. Don't come out here. Did you vote? Okay. 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 Voter died. She better let her vote. Carry it on with. I know why. Because they ain't her vote. Yeah. Put that on tape. Put that on tape. Another presidential election in question. President Bush's team declares victory, but John Kerry's campaign says it's not conceding Ohio. And whoever wins Ohio is the next president. Four years ago, Florida, Florida, Florida. This year, Ohio, Ohio, Ohio. Not bad. I'm writing a doctoral thesis right now, and uh, one of the things that as a subject I have is uh, you know how one person changed the world. Okay, and that, that one person uh, was Ken Blackwell. Okay, through his uh, administration of the voting system in Ohio, I think it enabled uh, George Bush to be reelected. The key role that Blackwell played was as a Bush partisan. Karl Rove knew all along, and if you want to win an election in a swing state where the vote's close, the key person to get the endorsement isn't the governor, it's the Secretary of State. So Catherine Harris in 2000 and J. Kenneth Blackwell in 2004, while they were supposed to be running the state election in a nonpartisan manner, in reality they were both co-chairs of the Bush election and then an 04 re-election campaign. In our democracy, your vote is your voice. Kevin Blackwell is writing his own book and uh, hopefully there are those of us uh, across the country and the state will, who will uh, 
cross some T's and dot some I's on his book so that people will understand the, the, the activities he's engaged in as a Secretary of State. I had spent so much time challenging some of his directives that no matter what he said, it, it, it's almost like, okay. Historically, if you go to vote and you were in the right county, you changed addresses, your vote would count. It just wouldn't count at the precinct level. It would count from the county level on up to president. What he did is he came up with a new ruling as Secretary of State. That is, if you voted in the wrong precinct, your vote for president did not count. That was the ruling of J. Kenneth Blackwell, co-chair of the Bush-Cheney re-election campaign. No government on the face of the earth can protect your human rights if they deny the existence of the provider. He's also famous for returning people's registration. He sent out an edict saying that uh, finding an old law uh, back before computers, 80 bond paperweight, which is that cardboard stock. Anything lighter than that, the registration could be uh, thrown out. And I found that pretty suppressive. Normal paper is about 20 bond paperweight. And in an era where a lot of this stuff is scanned in, virtually every board of election uses 20 bond paperweight. So what he did is he scoured uh, him and uh, operatives from the White House and the Republican Party, scoured, uh, you know, the law and came up with an old law uh, that was no longer practical in any way and then had people's registrations returned to him. My father, who was 96 at the time, and uh, the day before election, we got a letter stating that my father wasn't eligible to vote, and uh, which was really heart-wrenching to me. Then, of course, uh, he made sure that many of the precincts were closed and reshuffled in the inner cities. It was just too complicated, really. I feel like it was done on purpose to keep me from voting. I mean, it should have been something at the school telling us where to go and vote. So it was like being blind, you know, uh, something on our eyes we couldn't see. We was just in the dark and just feeling our way through, trying to figure out where to go and vote. Blackwell deliberately caused confusion to deliver votes to Bush. And he did that by essentially uh, making it difficult for people to vote for John Kerry. A lot of people went up to the school and then was, we was told that we had to go to another place. And that became a problem, a real big issue, because it was at the last minute of voting. And I think we ended up going to about four different places before we actually found out where we were supposed to go and vote. You know Jay Kenneth Blackwell? Yeah. Secretary of State at the time. Yeah. He's an African American himself. How yeah. do you feel about that? You know, and that's the worst thing. And they say it's Uncle Tomism. You, you came up for a reason. You came up through a struggle so that you can help a certain, not just help a certain person, an African American, so that you can help a consensus of a whole. You don't supposed to hold anybody back. But just being an African American, you're supposed to have more regard to a person that's African American, Latino, um, disabled, even though have a, for the lower class um, a Caucasian people, you're supposed to have a, some more esteem for them because you know how it is to be poor. You know how it is to not have. You know how it is to want something. Now all you have to do is look around and see that we're not all equal in size, weight, height, color, intelligence, income. Those are non-essentials. But we are all equal in the fact that we are made in the image of God. Investigate! Incarcerate! Investigate! Incarcerate! Investigate! Incarcerate! Investigate! Incarcerate! Do we want it? Now! Because it's outrageous that we have somebody who is both in charge of making sure we have nonpartisan fair elections and responsible for seeing a certain politician or a certain party uh, gain power in the state. So uh, I would ask him to, to step down from his involvement with the elections or to step down from his involvement with the Republican Party. Black will must go! Black will must go! I voted under the same name, at the same address, at the same precinct for 40 years with no trouble. And when I went to vote, this last election day, besides standing in line for an hour and a half, when I got up to the front of the line, I found that my name was no longer in the voter uh, registration thing there. It was like it had never been there. My husband and I were next to each other, and he was still there. 
but I wasn't. At least 308,000 people were purged, that is, permanently removed from the voting rolls. Now, not surprisingly, these occurred in Cleveland. It occurred in Toledo, another urban uh, town with high minorities, and included in, in the inner city primarily of Cincinnati, where 43% of the population is black. It wasn't occurring in Miami County, which was at the time 98% white, because this is a May perspective. You may purge. So the urban areas like Cleveland, in fact, Cleveland shocking because the exact figure we know from public records, 24.96% of the city of Cleveland was purged following the 2000 election and the 2004 election. They, they removed one in every four voters. And you could actually go down the list and the more uh, the area was primarily an African-American uh, precinct, the higher the number. So in many African-American wards, over half, uh, you know, in one precinct, 51% of all the voters were simply removed. And essentially through Bob Bennett, a longtime political operative who was chair of the uh, Cuyahoga Board of Election. Also the chairman of the Ohio Republican Party. Mr. Bennett was the one who ordered to have the Diebold system, registration system, I'm not talking about the touch screens, installed in September before the November election. And it just so happened that Diebold accidentally purged 10,000 people from the computer rolls. One of the things that Hillary Clinton and I tried to do in our county revoke <laughs> legislation was to prohibit the CEO, the COO, the CFO who has uh, of a company that has voting machines from being involved in uh, an election of a candidate because that surely creates an appearance of impropriety. The CEO of Diebold, Walden Odell, at the time uh, was one of the uh, members of the uh, President Bush's Ranger and Pioneer team, had raised $200,000 or so for the president and had written a fundraising letter promising to deliver the vote in Ohio. And then his company accidentally purges people, uh, 10,000 people in the city that voted uh, more than 80% for John Kerry. And people will say, well, it's just a computer glitch. Uh, and many like myself think, well, it's probably not a computer glitch or your computers are allowed to glitch far more in areas that uh, will benefit your candidate and harm his opponent. Is this the new 21st century, more sophisticated, high-tech Jim Crow? I, I love that expression, and it absolutely is. That was the worst election I've voted ever since I was 18 years of age. I'm 83 now, and that 2004 election is the worst election I've voted in. I wanted to leave, but he wouldn't let me. I was going to leave. Because I didn't feel like standing all that time, but, oh, no, no, let's do it, let's wait, let's wait. Since we're here, let's just wait. But I wanted to leave. It's too long. Did you think it was especially unfair for elderly people? Oh, sure it was. Sure it was. That's what it is. It is high-tech Jim Crow, uh, denying people opportunities. Voting should be one of the easiest things that anyone could do. I noticed that at my neighborhood, which is an affluent neighborhood, at my polling place, there were additional voting machines. We typically have three or four machines, and there were five on November 2nd. This election, I was at Ohio Avenue School as presiding judge. Um, we always had four machines at election time. So in the primary, we had four machines. When I walked in the door Tuesday morning, we had three. When I visited the lesser income neighborhoods, there were two or three machines at the most, people waiting in line for hours on end. And I called them up and I asked them, where's my other machine? And they first they told me, man, we're going to try to get your machine. So I called back the second time and told them, I don't need one, I need two. I said, because we got a line. They asked me, how long was the line? Is it 100 feet? I said, yeah, it's about 150 feet. And it appeared to me 
that the machines from the lower income places may have been removed to put in the more affluent neighborhoods. When I call them the third time and ask them for the machine, about the machine, they said, no, we're not going to get you no machine. We're not going to get you any machine. And what we want you to do is do the best you can with what you got. Who bears responsibility for the chronic underfunding of or undersupplying of voting machines in predominantly African American districts like this? Well, um, the County Board of Elections actually determines okay, how many machines a uh, precinct will get. That individual Board of Elections director determines who gets what machines. Here in uh, Columbus, Ohio, Franklin County, Matt Damschroeder, who is the uh, director of the Franklin County Board of Elections. He was the chair of the Republican Party, then he became the director of the Board of Elections. By their own estimates, they needed about 5,000 machines. They conducted the election with 2,741. That's how many they put out. Now, if you had had paper backups, you could have just handed out paper ballots, and people could have taken a pen or pencil and marked and turned them in, dropped them in a box. But they didn't have that. You had to wait to vote on the computer voting machines. Hence, the, in the inner city, the wait to vote was three to seven hours because that's where they took the machines from. Not only that, they failed to put out 125 machines. Uh, they left them in the warehouse for an emergency. And Matt Danschel went under oath and said he didn't know of any other machines. Matt decided that if you voted, you went to the polls and you were wrongly given a provisional ballot, and you voted the provisional ballot given to you by the poll workers, which he hired, your vote didn't count because you should have voted on a machine instead of on the ballot wrongly given to you by the people he hired. The presiding judge um, uh, was very inexperienced and lacked training. Towards the end of the day, he I bent over and he said, oh, if you do that again, they're going to kick us both out of here. Saying comments like that all they wanted to try to get me to leave. I wanted to assist him going downtown because I was afraid he was going to open up the original ballots and do something with them because I fought so hard and so long all day to protect them. And it was just a horrible, horrible experience. The first thing the voter will see is an instruction screen. I did get to my machine. I pushed John Kerry and my vote immediately jumped up to George Bush. Touch screen similar to what we've been using since 1992, so the learning curve for us in Franklin County won't be nearly as steep as for those who have been doing punch cards for a long time. First week of August, we visited the Franklin County Board of Elections. We ended up talking to Matt Damschroeder, and we questioned him on the voting machines, and he told us they were calibrated, they were tested, they were sealed, they were stored and they would be ready to go on election day. And at the end, I asked him about, are you going to be able to handle the flow of voters that we're going to have? Because everybody knows that this is going to be a mass turnout. And he assured me in no uncertain terms that they wouldn't be able to handle it. Well, obviously they didn't. I went to my voting precinct at 6 o'clock in the morning. I was one of the first in line. We had six voting machines. Two of them already were not working. We had 77 machines break down in 2004, and that's uh, Matt Damschroeder's count as the director of the Franklin County Board of Election. Almost all of them were in the inner city. I worked at the Broad Street Presbyterian Church. At that particular location, there were three voting machines. In the morning, they did not work. So people that got there early in the morning to vote were not able to vote. Not enough machines and broken down machines all across the inner city precincts. I voted in a predominantly Democrat precinct in the east side of Columbus, Ohio, arriving about 15 minutes till 6, and there were eight voting machines, electronic voting machines. The one that I was assigned to was not taking votes. I saw the four, three people before me have difficulty and then after a while leave. When it was my turn, I attempted to get my vote registered repeatedly. It never took the vote. The election officials came there and sort of tinkered with it and after a while, the whole screen went blank as though the, the plug had been pulled and they said, you have voted. But it was blank. 
Then I went to my place of business and spent the day calling everywhere, including to DC. Got no satisfaction. At the end of the day, um, the director of the Board of Elections, Dan Schroeder, called and said, you can't vote twice, and that was the end of that. And so I haven't gotten my vote, and apparently a lot of other people feel as disgruntled as I do. I feel as though our democracy is either gone or close to gone, and unless this effort works, we don't have one. We have a dictatorship. When I went down to complain at 11 o'clock uh, on Election Day, I went in and, uh, as an attorney and demanded to see Matt Dam Schroeder. You know, you go down to the Board of Elections where you could have voted. Uh, they had buses lined over up everywhere for a terrorist attack. They had uh, uh, concrete barricades like a maze. And then they had a, a phalanx of armed, overwhelmingly white deputy sheriffs, uh, metal detectors. This is where you're supposed to go and vote if you didn't want to wait in line. And then you go through and there was additional security and I asked to see Matt. And I was told by the two people running security that he was meeting with Ken Blackwell. He and Ken Blackwell were meeting with President Bush, that Bush had come into town, which was later confirmed by the AP that Bush flew unexpectedly into Ohio, uh, right? The early exit polls, uh, you know, at noon or so showed him losing the state of Ohio. And then he flew in and there was a miraculous, unexpected, last second turnaround uh, in the state of Ohio. I have been an election integrity activist um, staunchly, basically since the 2004 election, um, when I knew, not for sour grapes, but when I knew it was, re the whole system was really, really bad. I couldn't believe, um, not only the Kerry loss, but the fact that he couldn't have lost, um, according to all polls, and I was in the Democratic headquarters, I knew what the poll numbers were, and all the late changes. The numbers were coming in um, pretty consistently for Kerry until late in the night. It was someplace around 10, 30, 11 o'clock, all of a sudden, things started taking a dramatic swing. And it was supposedly the excuse was that it was rural Ohio that Kate was coming in. But something very strange was happening and it was unfathomable from the numbers that Bush could have taken Ohio. In Warren County, a phony level 10 Homeland Security alert was declared on election night and the county administration building was locked down. Neither the press nor independent observers were allowed to observe the vote count. The lockdown was just too strange. Back in the background, there's an elementary school within uh, oh, probably 300 yards, and nobody, to my knowledge, uh, in the Board of Education or the superintendent or anyone else was ever informed of it. Level 10, even though the sheriff of the county laughs out loud about it, you know, uh, the FBI said it didn't call it. It was called by the homeboys of, you know, Warren County. They diverted the uh, ballots to a warehouse. And, under the control of a Republican operative. That the Homeland Security alert was approved behind closed doors by the county commissioners five days before the election. The public was not notified until the polls closed and the building was locked down all night. So here's what they did in Warren County. They took a specified number of ballots, punched for carry, from each precinct while the ballots were in the unauthorized building services storage facility. And they moved them one precinct up the list, where a punch for Kerry would be counted as a punch for Bush. In Ohio, the sequence in which the candidates' names appear on the ballot must, by law, rotate from precinct to precinct. There is a set order in which the precincts are listed. It is known in advance to everyone, including vote riggers. If you move those ballots one precinct up the list, you reverse the results for every contested race. Issue one, a constitutional amendment which banned homosexual marriage or anything resembling it, passed resoundingly with 61% of the vote. Ballot initiatives don't rotate. 
from precinct to precinct. Yes is above no. And you're turning gay-friendly carry voters into gay-friendly Bush voters. There were three counties, Delaware, Claremont, and Warren, where there had to be thousands of gay-friendly Bush voters. The key thing that you saw in the back of these ballots, they didn't indicate their ballots by precinct, which they should have, which allows them to be portable, to take ballots from one precinct and count them at another precinct, and hence, you know, a two vote for Kerry in this precinct, you count it at this precinct, that two vote becomes a two vote for Bush. It's right now 12 noon. Yeah. Right okay, now, no, hey. the electors are illegally meeting because the recount has not yet taken place. And the, a real vote has yet to take place in Ohio where all of the registered voters who want to vote can vote. I would recommend that you go back out to the sidewalk. That's where you can legally be. You're not allowed to have signs out here on state property because you don't have a permit. Who put the signs away? Can you go in then? Public, is this a public event? What did they, uh, what they said? It's a ticketed event. Oh, it's ticketed. Yeah, they have tickets to get in. That's all for the death of the market. Bush, Vice President, Chief, 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 <laughs> ah, good times. It's like Catherine Harris four years ago. 500 people showed up yesterday. Yesterday, Saturday. In Columbus. To volunteer for the recount. They haven't really been able to tell us um, when they'll start the recount in certain counties because they hadn't finished verifying the poll books yet. They hadn't finished right. going through them. Counting exactly. And it doesn't take <laughs> a month to go through it. Why did you pick Ohio? This is the pivot point for fraud in this election, for, for theft of this election. We're just connecting with each other and sitting here very frustrated that we don't have the forces to stop this sham. Well, at the same time, you had very similar results in the UK. The exit polls were about 4% off, very similar. The US Secretary of State refused to acknowledge the election. Everyone agreed that it was a fraudulent result because of the exit polls that mirrored what happened in Ohio, and they re-voted in the Ukraine because everyone knew that the election polls had indicated a fraudulent election. <laughs> своє незадоволення роботою центральним комітетом, який під неправильно підхував наші голоси. Ми прийшли сюди, тому що ми не можемо підкорити тої несправедливості, що вони з нами роблять. Це є страшне. Це нарешті люди пробудилися. Україна стала з колін. Вже неможливо терпіти та їм брехні і знущання з людей. Мені все одно. Я вже прожила життя. Мені все одно, але заради своїх дітей і онуків я прийшла сюди. І не піду звідти, поки нічого не поки не зміниться влада. You see an overinflated vote in the Southwest Republican control, and you don't see voter suppression. You don't see Jim Crow. You see whites voting early and often. And then you see unexplained computer uh, switches at the end. In uh, Butler County, you know, the triad people show up and, according to the election officials, tweak the calculator, which wasn't broken. Uh, Bush gets an unexplained vote. 14,000 unexplained, you know, votes uh, uh, than what the exit polls were predicting in Warren County. In Claremont County, the uh, OptiScan counter goes down because of too much moisture. And when it comes back up, which gets an unexplained super high vote. Those three counties alone, you know, uh, provided more than the entire Bush margin of victory. 
He only won by, you know, less than 119,000 votes. And he got like 140,000 from those three Republican-owned counties. Two previous, like Perry County, a Republican county, their original vote, 120%, 124%. Now it looks like they were stuffing everything they could uh, to get Bush a high vote total so Kerry would concede. And on that, it worked. Almost every imaginable method of ballot tampering we have found in these suspect counties in Ohio. Observers to the phony recount staged in December 2004 observed numerous ballots with little white stickers over the mark for John Kerry and the mark for Bush filled in. In Dark County, we have photographs of punch card ballots with nothing printed on the back. They're absolutely blank. Not the year of the election, not the county, not the precinct, nothing. Blank. Nothing on the back. These are wild card ballots to be used in any county on an as-needed basis in a scheme of old-fashioned ballot box stuffing. We found 212 consecutive ballots for Bush in one precinct in Butler County. You know, if you're going to take 50 ballots punched for Kerry and replace them with 50 ballots punched for Bush, if you don't shuffle the deck afterwards, there's going to be a stack of 50 consecutive ballots for Bush. That we found more than once. We found 359 consecutive ballots punched for Bush in Delaware County. Now, I considered the possibility that there had been a tent revival in Genoa Township Precinct I that night, and nine busloads of God-fearing Christians had been driven to the polls after the last Kerry person voted, and they all lined up and they all voted for Bush. And that's why the ballots were all at the bottom of the deck. But all 359 voters would have to be registered in the same precinct, and 100 of them voted for gay marriage, which does not fit the expected demographic for rural evangelical voters. When we went to Miami County, where turnout was the issue, because of the 19,000 votes added to the totals after 100% of the precincts had reported, and where in one precinct 98.55% was the official turnout, supposedly all but 10 voters out of 689 turned out to vote, as if nobody had died or moved away in the last four years. Well, on just two pages of the voter signature book, we found 13 blanks. I mean, when you report 98, you know, 0.55% of the people voted in Concord Southwest Precinct, and you show up, you know, and you're supposed to see 679 people voted at the precinct out of 689, and you read the uh, poll books, and you find only 547 people signed in, it sure looks like somebody committed fraud uh, for those extra, you know, votes, the difference between 679 and 547. Uh, you know, there appears to be 132 phantom votes in that precinct alone. We found that the turnout data was wrong in every single precinct in Miami County. The official results were wrong in not one precinct, but all 82, certified by J. Kenneth Blackwell. Delaware County came to my attention because there were 45% more ballots cast in 2004 than in 2000. Yes, I know it's the fastest growing county in Ohio, but not that fast. For every 100 ballots cast in Bush versus Gore, there were 145 in Bush versus Kerry. And I asked the obliging director of the Board of Elections for a spreadsheet containing the names of the 22,000 voters who must have registered. They provided me with a spreadsheet that fell 6,000 names short. Telling me that there's probably 6,000 extra votes in the totals. I think the strategy really was, you know, we need to get a lot of votes so Kerry won't contest this. You know, I mean, the lesson from Florida is you don't want to win by a few votes. The media examines it, it later recounts it. It shows, you know, that uh, if all votes are counted, Gore wins. So the lesson of Florida was, if you're going to steal, don't steal enough to barely win. Steal a lot, because then it won't be challenged. So that's why you get these exit polls saying, Kerry winning by 3%, and Bush wins by 3 That's a 6% shift. That's the shift of uh, virtually, instead of Kerry winning by 
120,000 votes, Bush winning by 120, 130. You know, they're shifting a quarter of a million votes, and that doesn't count the people they suppressed. So uh, it affects every, I mean, his policies affect I'm saying, the city in general. I mean, there's no jobs. What do you think we're in store for? Total chaos. Um, it won't be an official martial law kind of thing, but you can tell. Uh, your rights getting stripped away from you. You can't say what you're saying. You can't say what's on your mind. You can't talk on the phone without somebody listening to your conversation. My phone was tapped, so I know what that's like personally. You know, it's each piece by piece, your uh, individual rights will be stripped. Best contribution Bush has given us in the past uh, four years. I think it's uh, he gives a lot more moral values than we've had before. You're an American, right? Yeah, I'm right here. Well, I'm on attack. You gotta go fight back, right, Colonel? When did we, when did Iraq attack us? I'm confused. Don't be confused. You don't understand the game. Well, tell me, tell me when Iraq attacked us, and I won't be so confused. What do you think of allegations of voter suppression in predominantly Democratic districts in Ohio and Florida? I, I feel like uh, any voter that wanted to get out could vote. I don't feel like that there was any discretion or anything against voters. We uh, we don't feel like that was an issue. If it was an issue, the people would take it up. <laughs> There is only one force of history that can break the reign of hatred and resentment and expose the pretensions of tyrants and reward the hopes of the decent and tolerant and that is the force of human freedom. We will defend ourselves and our friends by force of arms when necessary. Freedom by its nature must be chosen and defended by citizens and sustained by the rule of law. You all right, man? You all right, man? 
Fire your eyes, give your eyes. Water. 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 Give him some water. Tilt your head like this. All right? Tilt your head. Open, Open your eyes. eyes. Open, Open your eyes. eyes. You can. Open your eyes. Other eye. Other eye. Other eye. Mr. Morrow, I'm hurt and I need to get out of Come here. Come on. What do you anticipate um, here in Franklin County when inner city people show up to vote? Well, you know, I'm hoping nothing goes wrong, but it could be as simple as uh, they've been purged without their knowledge. That's why we've been encouraging everyone to vote early, because you get to vote on paper. It only requires the last four digits of your social security number, and they're uh, checking against a very strong database, the Social Security Administration. I really want to get it over with, and I just thought it would be better if I do it today than tomorrow. That's what I'm scared. I just want to make sure my vote gets in and counted. Oh, we've been here since about 5.30. The time right now is... 54. Long time. Did you expect it to be this long? No. <laughs> I actually did. I thought it was going to be about three hours. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, I guess it was worth it. I hope. It's pretty amazing to see people waiting five or six hours last night just because they wanted to make absolutely certain that they got their, yeah. they got their vote in. Uh, when I was here in 2004, the uh, voting machines were in the library, which are in the far corner of this building. So the line came out all the way through the building here, uh, full breadth of the sidewalk, down the sidewalk, and past that uh, small tree uh, with the reddish leaves uh, at, the, at the very end. We went from three machines in uh, 2004 up to uh, eight machines in 2008. Looks like about 35% of the folks that voted early uh, absentee. So uh, people were really taking advantage of the convenience of uh, you know that early voting. So that uh, that's a po very positive. And how does this make you feel about us, our former Secretary of State Blackwell? Well, I tell you, I, uh, the more I think about it, the matter I get that it indicates to me how much the vote was suppressed back in 2004. Uh, we could have had this back in 2004 also, and, uh, you know, it would have been a much better day. But uh, I'm really excited to come back to this location and see the improvements that everybody uh, has been a part of to, to get to the point where people can vote. Now, hopefully the vote will be counted correctly and, um, you know, we'll uh, have a good outcome for this election. Yeah. Not going to have that no more. No, ma'am. They won't pick on Ohio anymore. Huh. We're ready for it. <laughs> yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad we were. Oh, yeah, we are ready this time. My voting experience this morning was really nice. So we went in and voted and was right out and have any problem at all. Actually, I ended up voting this year. I didn't think I was going to, but they had early voting and I could get in and get out real quick. So I went two weeks ago. This time it was just go in, fill out a paper, fill out your ballot and leave. I mean, it was quick, calm, collected. Everybody knew what they were doing. Nobody sent you the wrong way or anything. So it was, it was pretty good. How many were there when you were here? Three.
the assumption is it wouldn't happen here, right? But the reality is people have always stole elections in the United States and every other country in the world. People steal elections, sixth grade class president, homecoming queen, oh, prom queen. People steal elections. They steal elections all over the world. They stole elections at the local, state, national elections in the United States. Unless you can create transparency, unless you can create a system where it's difficult to do so, elections are going to be stolen.